known as the Icebox Murders. In 1965, Fred and Edwina Rogers were living in Houston along with her grown son, Charles. The family mostly kept to themselves in their quiet neighborhood, especially given Charles's reclusive and antisocial behavior. In fact, many neighbors were not even aware that Charles lived at home with his parents because he left the house each day before dawn and did not return until well after nightfall. When a family member hadn't heard from Rogers in several days, he called the Houston police for a welfare check on his elderly aunt and uncle. The patrolmen were unable to locate Fred and Edwina, but they noticed food sitting on the dining room table. They opened the fridge and noticed numerous packages of meat, neatly stacked atop one another. Then they noticed two human heads in the vegetable bin. Additional officers arrived on the stomach turning scene and slowly removed the packages full of dismembered body parts from the fridge. The remains were that of Fred and Edwina Rogers. Naturally, Charles was the prime suspect in this heinous crime. However, he seemed to have vanished off the face of the earth. Though the police were able to con- collect circumstantial pieces of evidence against him, Charles Rogers was never found. The Girl Scout Murders In the summer of 1977, three young girls staying at the Oklahoma campsite were raped were raped and murdered. The girls, Lori, Michelle, and Doris, were between the ages of 8 and 10. About two months before the murders, a camp counselor found a disturbing note in her belongings. The culprit promised to murder three children at the camp. Knowing that young campers enjoyed telling scary stories around the campfire, the camp counselor dismissed the threat as nothing more than a prank, a decision she would come to regret. Early in the morning of June 13, the girls' bodies were found in their sleeping bags out on the trail leading to the camp showers. The only evidence that their killer left behind was a red flashlight and a bloody footprint. The son, prime suspect in the Oklahoma Girl Scout murders was Jean Le- Leroy Hart, an escaped convict. Hart had been raised about a mile from camp, and at the time of the murders, he was at large after escaping from prison, where he had been serving time for burglary, kidnapping, and rape. A local jury acquitted Hart of the crime, citing a lack of evidence. However, Oklahoma police considered the case solved. To this day, no one knows if Jean Leroy Hart got away with murder or if the true killer was someone else entirely. Either way, the girl's killer never saw justice. Izzy Sagawam. This cannibal became a local celebrity after signing herself out of a Japanese mental institution in 1986. Izzy Sagawa became, came from a wealthy family and exhibited cannibalistic urges from an early age. Even engaging in bestiality, at 23, he made his first attempt at eating human flesh, breaking into a woman's house to cut off some of her flesh. He was caught and charged with attempted rape. Later, he moved to France to earn his PhD in literature. It would be then, at the age of 32, that Sagawa would kill and eat his classmate, René Hardvelet. He admitted to luring the 25-year-old Dutch woman to his apartment under the guise of working on poetry. He said he chose her for her beauty and health, two things he believed in he lacked. After shooting her in the neck, he ate various parts of her body over the course of two days. He then attempted to dump her body, including two suitcases of dismembered body parts, into a lake in the Bois de Boulogne, but was caught in the act. After being held for two years in police custody, Sagawa was deemed legally insane in French court and was ordered to be held indefinitely in a mental health institute. 
After being deported, deported to Japan, he was declared sane by a Japanese psychologist and so was able to sign himself out of care. The Granny Killer An English-born Australian serial killer, John Way Glover, was known for preying on elderly women, including the widow of an artist, Will Ashton. Over the span of 14 months, between 1989 and 1990, Glover murdered six elderly women after brutally attacking them. At times, he used simply his fist to attack his victims. With others, he used objects like hammers, his victims' pantyhose, and other instruments. Many of his victims were simply women he saw walking past him on the street with whom he struck up casual conversation. In addition to attacking and murdering those six women, Glover was also accused of molesting and sexually assaulting several other elderly women. At his trial, a psychologist noted that while Glover was sane, he had several personality, severe personality disorder, which may or may not have been connected to his turbulent relationships with his mother and mother-in-law. After being found guilty and sentenced to prison, Glover killed himself in 2005. Days before he died, he handed his last visitor a picture he had drawn featuring two trees and the number nine. Supposedly, nine is the true number of murders Glover was responsible for, not merely six for which he was convicted. <laughs>